What is going on guys? I'm Zachary Gray and today we're going to be out here looking for the Eastern Milk Snake. It is one of the coolest snakes out here in Tennessee and I've never actually looked for one of these snakes before so I'm really excited for this. Let's go. The mountainous regions of central Tennessee are some of my favorite habitats. These beautiful rocky areas are also home to a whole stack of different animals, including snakes. And this time of year, there's one snake in particular I'm on the hunt for, the eastern milk snake. This time of year, they can be seen fairly often cruising around or hiding under rocks, so we're going to be going to where some have recently been seen. And of course, we'll probably see some other common snakes along the way. There's a little snake going down here. Oh, look at him. Hello, little buddy. Come here. That's a little garter snake. I've finally broken my garter snake curse. I went a couple of years without finding one of these snakes, even though they are literally one of the most common snakes out here. Eastern garter snakes are one of the most widely distributed snakes out here. They kind of look like the ribbon snakes that we get back home, but they're a lot fatter and they've got checkering all along them. And their face has these little lines. And they kind of look like they've got a smile on their face. It's a really interesting look. Garter snakes will musk like crazy when you pick them up, really bad smelling. That's just to get you to put them down. They're very common out here. You can find them under debris, out in the open, or just coiled up under stuff. You'll see them on the roads at night. You can find garter snakes pretty much any way. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, these guys have a slight toxin in their saliva, and that means when they do bite, it can swell up a little bit. Nothing super dangerous, but some people have had bad reactions to their toxin in their saliva. I actually don't have a really good reaction, so I do try to avoid getting bit by these snakes when I handle them, but it is always cool to see one of these snakes, and very nice that I've broken my curse and am now finding this very common snake, so. All right, guys, we're gonna let this garter snake go and keep looking for other stuff. Here you go, bud. There you go, keep getting. Man, you just gotta love garter snakes. You can find them virtually anywhere and anytime. Always great to see them. This time of year, you'll see eastern milk snakes out cruising around, hiding in rock crevices, or just hiding under rocks if the conditions are right. And while I'm hiking, I'm pretty much always flipping rocks, which eventually led to our first eastern milk snake. Rock. Milk snake! Let's go! Let's go, milk snake! Yes, 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 yes. Look at this little dude. Oh my goodness, that is a baby Eastern milk snake. This is actually my first milk snake ever up here. I've only ever found Louisiana milks. And this is a little Eastern milk. As you can see, they've got a different coloration than Louisiana milks. They don't have the black, white, and red banding the same. They've got more brown and gray blotching. That is a very cool snake to see here. Probably one of the rarest snakes that you can find out here in the hillsides of Tennessee. They mostly like to live under rocks. These guys don't often live under logs and stuff like that. And uh, this is actually the best time of year to find these guys. You'll oftentimes see them sitting along rock cliffs and under little rocks and stuff. Now this is not a newborn baby, but this would be a yearling. They get much bigger than this. They can be around four to five feet long, full grown. But of course that would be a massive eastern milk snake. This is pretty normal to see these guys about this size this time of year. They look a lot like corn snakes and they also look a lot like prairie and uh, mole king snakes to a lot of people. He's got a good red, red coloration on him. It looks like he's in shed so he's not going to be that bright red coloration which is kind of unfortunate but this is how you find them oftentimes. This more brownish coloration. They are of course a non-venomous species and milk snakes are considered to be a mimic of coral snakes and of course in Tennessee you're not going to get any kind of coral snakes whatsoever and this guy does not look anything like them but other milk snakes tend to be that tricoloration with their yellow, the black, and the white. Very cool snake to see out here, very rare. Definitely something I was hoping to see here but something I was not expecting to find so very cool to see this little guy. I'm going to get some pictures of him, a little bit more handling and then we're going to put him right back under his little flat rock right there. All right, got to get some good shots of this little guy, but we're gonna keep looking. See my buddy, back under your rock. Yes. Now that I've finally gotten to see one of these milk snakes, we're heading to a more mountainous region in hopes of finding a big one. Eastern milk snakes grow much larger than the milk snakes I find back home, so I'm really hoping to see a big one while the conditions for finding them are still good. So there's some really cool rock cliffs up here. That's kind of what I want to go check out. Snake under the east pool. Oh, there's a ring. That's the only thing I would expect to find under rocks like that is a ring neck or an earth snake. But have a look at that. 
it's a little ring neck snake. This is probably one of the most common snakes out here, up in these mountains. They really don't care about the location. They'll live right along the cliff sides, along the ledges, at the basins, at the bottoms of stuff, and at the tops. They'll live in any of these mountain areas. I'm pretty sure they're just southern ringnecks, just like in Louisiana, and they're really pretty. They've got a bright yellow belly. This is kind of my favorite ringneck variant, ringneck subspecies, if you will, even though I find them all the time, I still think they're the best looking. Now this is about a half grown one, but they do not get very big. Ringnecks eat little invertebrates, worms, and all kinds of other little tiny stuff. So it's pretty normal to see them under all these little rocks hunting worms and other little bugs. This is something that a milk snake would eat, so uh, it's pretty cool to see this out here. It's a very, very cute little snake, and another species added to the list. So I'm gonna put his rock back, and I'm gonna slide him underneath it. Here you go, bud. Boop, boop, boop. And, all right. This is a very rocky spot. This looks good. Ooh, this is really good. Let me get my light on that. What you can oftentimes do in areas like this, especially in the morning time, let me get a little light so I can look better back here. As you can see snakes denning or hiding in between a lot of these cracks. Now what you're mostly going to get doing this is copperheads, timber rattlesnakes, and gray slash black rat snakes here. But what I'm really looking for is a really big milk snake. Man, these rocky cliff sides are absolutely perfect. You'll oftentimes see many different snake species hiding together in these areas, including venomous ones such as timber rattlesnakes and copperheads. So you always got to be careful when you're in areas like this. Luckily enough, the larger eastern milk snakes love these kinds of habitats, specifically for hunting shrews and eastern fence lizards. So our chances of finding one today were super high. Yo, dude, I just got a huge milk snake. Oh, he's trying to get away. No way! No way! This thing is huge! Check this out! That is the biggest milk snake I have ever caught. What the heck? He is incredible. Oh my goodness. Have a look at that snake. That is a giant eastern milk snake. He is gorgeous. This is a pretty good size adult. Uh, normally you're gonna see him smaller than this, but this is an absolute beast. Now they can get around four foot. This would be about a three foot milk snake, but technically they have reached lengths of four foot. As you can see, he's got a dark gray coloration, that bluish color, and uh, he's in shed right now, which is kind of unfortunate. I would have loved to see this snake in perfect shed, but uh, this is how we found him, so this is how we're gonna film him. That is a beautiful, beautiful snake. Now like other milk snakes, they're very docile, and uh, they just will not bite. Most of these snakes will not bite. However, they will musk on you occasionally. He was sitting right wedged. There's a big wedge at the end right there, and we'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, he was sitting right under there. When I shined this light at him, he took off. He was trying to get back there. And uh, you can kind of see where the shed on his neck got messed up because he tried to wedge back into a rock when I saw him there. These species, the favorite thing to eat out here is actually shrews. Shrews are a little rodent-like creature that live out here. They live all up in these rocks and under little pieces of wood. And uh, they're a very little interesting creature that these guys will eat because there's not as many mice up here. Now they'll also eat fence lizards. There's not as many green and old lizards up here in Tennessee. This is kind of like the most northern part of their range from what I know, but they will eat fence lizards. But for the most part, these are a rodent specialist. They'll mostly be eating shrews, little mice, and little rats. So that means this is a great snake to have around your house because they're not going to be eating many other things. And like other milk snake species, they will try to nab an occasional other snake. So this would eat a smaller copperhead or a ringneck snake or something like that. And they will even eat other milk snakes. Now, eastern milk snakes to me are much more king snake-like. And obviously milk snakes are a species of king snake, but they vary much more than other milk snake species. And what I mean by that is they're not that tri-colored coloration, they have more blotching, and just their face looks more like other king snakes than it would other milk snakes. But obviously milk snakes are a species of king snake. I'm just kind of saying they do look a lot like more like king snakes than milk snakes to me. Beautiful, beautiful snake. I really wish we'd gotten this guy out of his shed because once he sheds, he is just gonna be drop dead gorgeous. I mean, this is gonna be, he might even be red. Some of these snakes can be red. And up in the mountains is where these guys tend to have this more brown coloration. 
of a, nor of a more average eastern milk snake. Then once you get up into Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, areas like that, they're pretty much all gonna look just like this as well. So we're gonna go back down here where he was. And this is rock. So this is where he was sitting. He was tucked back right in there. So that's, it's nice and cool down there, so that's where we're gonna put him. See you, buddy. That is insane. Well guys, that's it for this video. We really hope you guys enjoyed. Also, as you can see, I'm wearing my merch. If you guys wanna get this, the link will be in the description. You can go check that out. That's all for today's video. We'll see you guys next time.